And I mean, we can't not talk about the star of the show. I made that bread, guys. I made it. Once you start making your own bread, you never want to buy the stuff at the grocery store again. I'm telling you, there's no preservatives. There's no added sugar. I also just really enjoy the process of bread baking. It's very relaxing and calming to me, and it's just something I enjoy as a hobby as well. But I'm also a busy mom of two, so I'm so excited to share my new favorite recipe for making rustic sourdough bread. And this one takes less than 10 hours from the time you mix up the dough till you slice into that fresh, delicious loaf. But speaking of bread, I am out of our regular sourdough bread that we've been eating for like sandwiches and toasts throughout the week. So we're gonna make some more today. And I actually found a recipe that I've just started using and it is a one day sourdough bread recipe, which is so rare. Usually sourdough, a big part of it is how long the fermentation is so it can like fully rise with all the natural yeast. Um, but this one turns out so good and it's quick-ish, quick-ish for sourdough. It's still like, an eight to 10 hour process. But the actual amount of time you spend making it is not very much in between. It's a lot of rest time in between. So we're gonna get that started here. Um, I went ahead and fed my sourdough starter this morning. This is Winnie. I keep her in an old honey jar. On baking day, I feed my sourdough starter early in the morning with half a cup of bread flour and half a cup of water. I try to use water that's like slightly warm, give it a really good stir to make sure everything's incorporated from the bottom of your jar. And then usually within about three to four hours, my starter has more than doubled and is ready to be made into my dough. How to start a sourdough starter is like a whole nother thing. If you guys are interested, maybe I'll do a video on it, but there's a lot of other creators who've already made them. Um, you can though, if you wanna skip out the hardest step, which is starting your own starter from scratch, you can buy sourdough starter on Etsy, on Facebook Marketplace, a lot of different bread companies sell them and they give you all the instructions to get it going from a dry powder to an active sourdough starter. And that is the key ingredient you need to make sourdough at home. You can't just make it without the starter. It's what makes the bread rise. So otherwise it's so simple. It's literally starter, bread flour, water, and salt. Those are the only ingredients in my sourdough bread. My starter has successfully doubled in size. It's nice and bubbly in there. We need one cup of active sourdough starter. One and a half cups of like lukewarm temperature water. Mix those two up until they fully incorporate together. And then three cups of bread flour. And then we're gonna start off mixing this with a spatula. It is going to be sticky. It is not going to be like a super cohesive bread dough at first. It's gonna be very wet. Um, I'm gonna mix it with a spatula as much as I can. And then I'm gonna wet my hands um, and get in there. It's gonna be a sticky mess though. It just, it's the nature of this kind of dough. All right, my hands are slightly damp now and I'm just gonna continue working the dough together until all the flour has combined in. All right, so it's all incorporated. This is a very sticky dough yet. It transfers. Um, but I'm gonna leave this covered with a damp towel for 30 minutes and then we're gonna pinch in the last ingredient, which is the salt. All right, after 30 minutes, we're back. It's rested a little bit. Now we're gonna add in two teaspoons of some sea salt. One, two. Now again, going in with wet hands, I'm gonna use that to help just kind of pinch the salt into this very wet, sticky dough. And then we're gonna cover it with the wet cloth again and set it aside for an hour and a half. And then we'll be back to do some stretch and folds. So again, this takes multiple hours over the course of your day, but the actual amount of time you're doing stuff with the dough is pretty minimal. I need to get back to my dough, which has now been sitting a little bit longer than I normally like to leave it at this stage. Normally I try and leave it for an hour and a half. It's been closer to two hours, but I'm gonna go in with wet hands again and do some stretches and folds, which is just a technique of stretching the dough and folding it over itself. And you just like kind of quarter turn it until you do all the way around. So four stretch and folds. Um, and we're gonna do that now. And again in 30 minutes, again in 30 minutes from that and one more time. So four total with 30 minutes in between each. 
I know, this is very wordy. I'll write out directions in the description box. So going in with slightly damp hands, we're beginning our first set of stretch and folds. On one side of the bowl, I'm going to take the edge, pull it upwards, and then fold it over the center, layering it on top of itself. Quarter turn the bowl and repeat this process until you've worked your way all the way around the dough. Think of it like north, south, east, and west directions. You want to stretch and fold over the middle the north corner, the east corner, the south corner, and the west corner. And once you've done that, you've completed one set of stretch and folds. We're replacing the slightly damp towel after that and setting it aside for half an hour. And then we'll repeat this process as a second set of stretch and folds. The stretches and folds help develop the gluten in your bread, which are gonna give it great structure and that delicious chew on the inside. You can kind of see as I progress through my different stretch and folds, the dough is coming more together. It's less of wet kind of sloppy mess and it's becoming more of a dough ball. It's also starting to grow a little bit in size. After the last set of stretch and folds, we're going to let this sit on the counter to bulk ferment for two hours at room temperature. After two hours, we're ready to do our first shaping of our dough. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it out onto the counter. It should release on its own from the bowl. I'm using a lightly floured surface and a little bit of flour on my hands. I go ahead and flatten it into a rectangle and then I fold it in thirds towards the middle. Then I'm gonna roll it from the short end up to the other short end to form a tight tensioned ball. How I do this is by using a technique where you push the dough away from you and then you pull it back towards you, turning in in a circular motion. So once the dough is shaped, I take my banneton bowl. I'll link all sourdough supplies that I used in today's video in the description box but you can also just use a glass bowl with some flour in the bottom. I did flour it to prevent sticking. I set my dough ball inside, cover it tightly with some plastic wrap and stick it in the refrigerator to cold ferment for a minimum of two hours. I got my oven preheated to 450 degrees. I put my cast iron Dutch oven in there to heat up with it. Here's my loaf of sourdough. I just took the cellophane off and this is a piece of parchment paper. We're just gonna turn it right out. There she is. So I'm just taking a little bit of flour, sprinkling it on top, giving it a nice coating. So this is a little razor tool I have. You don't have to have something like this to do sourdough. You can use a sharp knife, um, but you wanna put a vent in sourdough. It helps to release some of the steam and it lets the bread keep rising in the oven. We're just gonna kinda come in here and do like one kinda curvy little slice there we go some people like to decorate theirs like oh look it's got little little slashes like some wheat i guess i don't know this is when you get to play with it and have fun some people do really fancy decorated ones so now that my oven's preheated i'm gonna go ahead and bring this whole thing over on the parchment set it in the dutch oven and then pop a few ice cubes i usually do about three or four around the sides of the bread where it's underneath the parchment paper but on top of the base of your dutch oven then place the lid on top this is going to trap all that steam inside with your bread helping it to rise even more and keep the crust nice and soft as it bakes for the first 30 minutes in the oven. After 30 minutes, we're going to take the top off, place it back in the oven, and bake an additional 15 minutes to get that beautiful golden crust. First peek. Ooh, yeah. She's a beauty. The hardest part, you guys, it smells so amazing in here. You really need to wait one to two full hours before cutting into this. Otherwise, the inside is still cooking a little bit and it'll turn out gummy if you cut it and release the steam too fast. So 
All right, Miss Bread, we'll be back for you. I ended up waiting until the next morning to cut into our fresh bread for toast in the morning, but you could have cut this as soon as one to two hours later. And since we started the dough process at noon, that means this whole sourdough bread recipe only took nine to 10 hours from mixing the dough to pulling fresh, delicious bread out of the oven with it fully cooled and ready to cut into. I have never used such an easy recipe for sourdough before, and it turns out delicious every time. It has a nice crispy golden crust, but the inside is soft and chewy, and there's plenty of those iconic sourdough like dimples and bubbles. Mm. Soft and chewy, nice little crispy crust. That's some good bread. What do you think, Nora? Oh, chewy. Oh, it's chewy? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Good. Good, nice. I've really gotten into the process of baking sourdough bread. It's so much fun. My girls love baking it with me. We've tried different kinds and flavors of bread, bagels, English muffins, pizza dough, scones. If you wanna see more sourdough recipes, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss out on my next one. And until then, bye. I always do. I never think I always do. Never thought I